Hey there, TC made with TC Gaming. Wanted to give you a quick workflow for Character Creator 3 or CC3 out to ALS 4, which is Advanced Locomotion System version 4. Uh, one of the first things you want to do out of Character Creator 3 is go to your plugins, Character Creator Nyclone Auto Setup, get the tool for Unreal, and uh, if you look through the directions in here, it's going to tell you how to download that and install it. And once you get done running the installation guide through there, what that's going to basically do is it's going to put a set of files on your local machine. I'll show you where mine ended up on here. So I'm under D on my particular thing, D program files, and then it's under Real Illusion, Shared Plugins, Auto Setup, Unreal, and we get the one for our version, which I'm in 426. And what you want to do is take the content and plugins from there. I'm right-clicking to copy this, or you can just right-click here and say copy. And then I'm going to go into my Epic uh, Games project here for Advanced Locomotion. Right-click on Content and Show in Explorer. And under the Explorer option, I'll just go back up one folder so that I'm at the content area there. And I'm going to right click here and just say paste. And that's going to bring in a couple of things. And once those are in there for our Real Illusion uh, project, um, I'm going to restart this real quick. And I don't know, you might be able to just get it from going to settings plugins and looking for that. I don't know if it shows up in there until you restart. Uh, I don't see it, so we'll just restart the project, which will only take a second. And we'll go back in. And once we get back in there, we should see that we have our plugins installed. Let me go up here to my export folder real quick just for another. This, we'll use this in a second here. Okay, so um, now that the plugins are coming back in, um, I'm just going to say update that. Project names, not a big deal. Dismiss, but CCC setup is now here in this window. So we're in good shape. What we want to do now is we want to go over to our CC3 character. And uh, we want to go up here and say File, Export, and FBX Clothes character. We want to go to Target Tool Preset Unreal using the mesh. Set our max texture size to 4096. And I usually leave Delete Hidden Faces on. In this case, I'm only exporting the mesh. Okay, so we're going to hit Export. Just warning us that if we make any changes, we can't do anything with it. We say OK. I'm going to replace this existing character file. And when that gets done processing, I'll be right back. All right, now that our file has exported successfully, we can go into our Unreal Engine project for Advanced Locomotion System. I created a folder in here called CC3 underscore character. You can do that by right-clicking on content and saying new folder. The CC underscore shaders file folder is created during the installation when we pulled those uh, things over earlier. So what I do is I click in the CC3 character folder that I created. I go out to where I had exported my characters, which in this case was the CC3 modular folder. Again, you can use whatever names you want to. I'm going to drag my character 01FBX over into the window. And since I have the CC setup tool on, it's going to ask me how I want to bring this in. So I'm just going to pick high quality shader OK and let it start the import process. And then we'll go to our settings when this pops up. Right back. Okay, now that our import options have popped up, we want to make sure that Skeletal Mesh and Import Mesh are selected. For this project, we're going to use the ALS Mannequin Skeleton as our target. And you just want to hit this little drop-down button here and use T0 as reference pose should be checked. And also check on Import Morph Targets. Yours may not be on, but if you flip that on, it'll give you some options for the facial animation of the character, I believe. And then if you scroll down here, you want to say Do Not Create Material and also uncheck import textures then you're simply going to say import all and we're just going to let that run and I'll be right back okay now that that is done importing we can go in and take a look at our character and uh, what we should see in here is that we have all of our morph targets that came in you'll probably have to compile shaders for some of this stuff to look better this looks a little weird to me but uh, hair from CC3 always looks a little strange so I have to play with that a little bit but uh, you know for example you should be able to go in here and set like yeah you know, there's the shaders coming in now okay I'll be back when these shaders get done compiling sorry okay whenever it gets done doing whatever it's doing uh, we can just see like as I was trying to say earlier that you should be able to do things like uh, manipulate the morph targets in here for 
the different things that we brought in with the assets. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the advanced locomotion character, um, sorry, blueprint character logic folder, pull up ALS anim man character BP, and in here we have a viewport for this character. You have a mesh, which is the anim man, and you also have a body mesh, which is currently set to none. What you can do is go to the body mesh portion of this and set that to character one. Since he's on the same skeletal framework, he should animate with that. And we'll also go to the mesh and also set that to character one, just so he's the right size. And if we go to the mesh, we also want to go down here and set that to not be visible and that'll put him back the way he should be now when you look at this what you should see if you go back to that CC3 character if you look at the animation data that's in here for him you should see that the animations look fine out here in the all the different little things that are set up for the character but what I noticed when I pulled this in is that there was some issue with him being distorted, which I believe is probably happening in um, because of like the size of the character in relationship to the other character. And normally you could fix that if you did it in the blueprint. You would go into the blueprint and just look, go up here to your mesh and just search for the anim class for ALS anim BP it'll pull this up for you go in here and there's a section here called foot IK if you open that up it brings in all these different little things usually the problem with the legs has to do with the um, knee targets or the IK for the feet in this case it looks like it's foot IK that causes the problem and the way that we figured this out is temporarily you could bypass this go right to component to local and it would it would make the feet look right uh, in the preview over here but what we want to do is go to two bone IK and for this particular character you may have to experiment with this for your other characters but if you go to the effector location on the left foot make sure that this foot underscore L is spelled correctly and all that kind of stuff you may have to go in here and temporarily like pick ball L and then repick foot L but um come down to effector location and on mine what I did is I did an offset of negative eight and I did a Z of 2. The Z of 2 moves his leg in a little, and the negative 8 moves his effector uh, down some. So by doing that, what it does is it puts the effectors closer to the floor to stretch his legs out a little bit better to make it look right. If you go to Enable Foot R, do the same thing. Just make sure that this is on the right uh, capitalization of that. And then down on your effector location, whatever you set this one to, so if this is negative 8, this is going to be positive 8. If this is negative 10, that's positive 10. Whichever one, you know, wherever you feel, it looks right. You can also figure that out by just moving this around and kind of getting it until you get it down close to the ground. And, you know, where you feel like his legs look pretty decent. And then you can just dial into the nearest value. So in my case, the nearest value was negative 8. And then I just zeroed these out. And again, setting that to 2 just brings his leg in a little bit this way and same thing on this other side make sure you set this to negative whatever that positive value was over there when you're done with that you can get compile and save go back out to your uh, demo level hit play and what you should see now is that his legs look a little bit more natural so he's standing a little bit better he's not all uh, crammed up like he was he runs just fine everything like that looks pretty good the thing I'm talking about with the slack jaw is see how when I turn my head his jaw the skin on his jaw kinda of like whips out of control here kinda of hard to catch him doing it but you can see it if you slow the video down you'll notice it so to fix that what we <clears throat> did in the past hopefully it works on this you go back in the anim blueprint and under here um, I think you can just type in look towards and then you go to look towards camera states and there should be a section here under look towards camera states that has all these different little chunks in it and it's all of the red and the green sections have a 
blend in them, which I think is just this blend logic right here that we want to fix. So it's the red one. Blend logic. And I think there should be yeah, blend profile. See the blend profile on these are all set to head. That one's set to none, none, head, head. So what you can do, if I remember the way that I did this last time, um, if you go to the one, like basically set them the opposite of what they are. So go to the red one. If the blend profile is none, set it to head. Go to the green one. If it's none, set it to head. Go down to this green one. If it's head, set it to none. Same thing here. This green one, if it's head, set it to none. Go to this red one. If it's head, set it to none. This one here, if it's head, set it to none. And by doing that, by switching all these off, basically, this one here should be... That was the one I turned into head, and same thing with this one I put on head. So if you compile this and go back to play, I don't think that fixes it yet. But what it does, it actually looks like it did kind of fix it. Yeah. So just switching them from the opposite of what they are should do it. Um, what I did in the previous video, if that doesn't work for you, is after I set them that way and compiled it and hit play, I went back in here and then reset them back to what they were. So in this case, we say clear this one and clear this one. And then go down here and set these to head because these were on head before. Let's just see if that does anything different for us this time. And we'll go through there. And it could just be as simple as just resetting them. It should fix it. Now, see that? Okay, that's still got the slack jaw. So you want to do it the way that I did it the first time. Basically, if it's on none, set it to head. And if it's on head, set it to none. So these four down here should all get clear. And one last compile. Actually, let's see what happens if we leave these on clear also. Just remember these top two were on head. We just be able to take all those off of there and fix the whole thing so it looks even better. Yeah, he doesn't have quite the same problem with his skin being whipped out of condition, but he does still work. So you'll have to experiment around with some of these things. See how it uh, affects your character. Okay. But that should get him a little bit better. Now this last one, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. This one here you're going to have to play with. When you jump up on something that's high, see how his hands go down through that uh, mesh a little bit? That's the one... If I remember correctly, you have to go into the character blueprint and inside of here under class defaults, they have a section in here for all the animations and for the mantling. And there's this whole section in here for mantle parameters and for like the default starting heights for all this kind of stuff. You'll have to look around and see if you can find out how to set those, but I believe that this is where it is. You have to adjust where the hands play that montage from. The offsets and everything that are um, set in here should affect that. Okay, so the, the highest one there, I guess, is the 2M. And I don't know, low height 125, high height 200, start low position. See, I don't know exactly how these should be set. Um, which on point six, I'll put it on one, and we'll go compile and see if it does it. I don't, I don't think it will, but it'd be interesting uh, just to check real quick. But I remember in another video, if you play around with those settings in there, that should be the thing that adjusts. You see, those are working fine. It's this upper one; it still just sinks down through there a little bit. And if that doesn't work, then the only other thing I know to tell you is that you can check in the IK settings, uh, like we did on the other IK there. But just set it for the one that is in um, for the hands. And that would be back in the animation blueprint. And there's an IK section in here somewhere under animation graphs right here. Two bone IK for the hands. It might be the same thing here where you just adjust how the effectors are offset to correct that. I don't normally mess around with that too much because I... 
the um, other process that I've used in the past that seems to work. My other process, you retarget everything onto the original skeleton. And I believe that, that seems to work, but this is the quicker way of doing everything. So hopefully this works out for you. If you guys figure anything out on that, let me know. And uh, it should get you pretty close and give you something to look at as far as tweaking it. Hopefully it works out for you. And again, my name is TC Made with TC Gaming, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great night. Bye-bye.